Welcome back everyone, Mindy here today and I'm going to be sharing with you how I created this card using the Dahlia Corner Frame Die from the Simon Says Stamp Blossoms and Butterfly Release. Here's a look at the Dahlia Corner Frame Die. You can see it die cuts out this beautiful frame and a very gorgeous detailed Dahlia in the corner there. This measures about two and a quarter by three and a half inches. So the first thing I'm going to want to do is I'm creating a background for my frame. I'm using Distress Oxides for this, and I'm also using the Gina K Designs Layering White cardstock. So the first one I'm starting off with is Tumble Glass, and this is just a really nice light blue. So I'm taking my uh, life-changing blender brushes from Pink Picket Fence Studios, and I'm just adding a really light color down onto my cardstock. So you can see I'm just swiping my brush over my ink pad and then just blending lightly onto the card. And every now and then I'll bring in that frame to make sure I'm creating a big enough piece. I'm gonna cut this down to fit uh, as a frame behind my frame. So there's gonna be a little bit of a border to it. Next, I'm grabbing Mermaid Lagoon. Now this one is a pretty bright blue, so I like to kind of swipe off onto my craft mat on the side there before I actually go to my cardstock. And I wanted an ombre look, so I wanted it to go from darker to lighter, and I'm gonna start that in that bottom left-hand corner because that's where my flower is going to be when I die cut it. So once again, just doing some circular motions to apply that ink. And you can see the best way for me to have control over these brushes is I'm holding it way towards the top, so right at the head of the brush. And that was just easier for me so I can control how my brush is moving and how much pressure I'm applying. Next, I'm coming in with the blueprint sketch and just adding that a little bit into that corner. I don't wanna cover up my Mermaid Lagoon. And then I'll come back in a little bit with that Mermaid Lagoon to kind of even out that blend. You won't have to worry about the blend too much because we're going to kind of cover it up. And the glimmer paste that I'm using helps blend those colors a little bit, kind of disguises if we don't have a perfect blend there. But I do like to come back in and just kind of go over those ed edges so they're just not so harsh. The layering white cardstock I'm finding is a really great cardstock for ink blending. It's a very, very smooth surface and it's not a really heavy cardstock. And then coming in with that tumble glass to finish that off. Next, I'm using the Moonstone Glimmer Paste. And this is just some really gorgeous sparkle I'm gonna add to that background. We're still gonna see those colors shine through, but it's just gonna add a ton of sparkle. So I'm going to scoop some out of my jar and just kind of smush it down onto my cardstock there. And then I'll just smooth that over the entire background. I want to make sure I'm having a nice coverage everywhere so that when I trim it down, everything will have that glimmer paste on it. One thing you don't want to do is once you've kind of spread that across your cardstock, you don't want to dip back in or you don't want to scrape this back into the jar uh, because it will be tinted because of that, those oxides. So you want to just be aware of that. And then once I have good coverage, I'm just going to take that palette knife and smooth it over, just kind of like icing on a cake. And once I'm done with this, I will wipe down my palette knife right away, and I'm going to clean off my mat. So now I'm going to take that uh, dolly die and do some die cutting. First... I'm starting off with some white glitter cardstock from Simon Says Stamp, and I'm using some double-sided Stick It adhesive. I always keep forgetting to do this, so I'm really excited I did this. You can just do regular glue too uh, to attach it, but I thought this would be so much easier. So I'm applying this to the back of my white glitter cardstock, and that's gonna give me even, co even coverage of adhesive on the entire back of that piece. And it just makes it a lot easier to attach this die cut down onto cardstock once I'm ready. So I'm gonna give this a really nice good push down, make sure that uh, my stick it is stuck everywhere I need it to be, and then I'm gonna just trim off those excess edges. 
and then I can get ready to die cut. So I will be using my Gemini Junior. This is such a phenomenal machine for die cutting, especially intricate dies like this. You can use whatever die cutting machine you have. This is just one that I have really been loving lately. So then once I ran that through the machine, you could also do some inlay die cutting because as you can see, this is really stuck in there. I'm kind of carefully prying the edges up and then I'll pull it very carefully. I don't want to ruin any of my intricate design. And you could save those pieces. I'm not really one for inlay die cutting, so but if you are, it's a gorgeous look that you can do with this as well. And then I'm just going to take my little pokey tool and pop out any of the inside pieces that didn't come out freely. There is a little bit of the backing from my stick it adhesive in there. I'm um, not gonna worry about it because once I peel off that backing, those are gonna pop right out. And then I also use my pokey tool to kind of pop out the rest of my die so I can clean that up and it's ready for a next use when I go to make another card. So the sentiment I'm gonna choose while my Card, Glimmer cardstock is drying is this is happy birthday and this is from the tiny words stamp set from Simon Says Stamp. So I just loaded that into my Misty tool. I'm using some black cardstock that I prepped with an anti-static powder tool. That just helps so my embossing powder only sticks to my sentiment when I stamp it. And I'm going to use the Simon Says Stamp Clear Ink. This is an embossing ink so this is going to be great. And I'll just ink up my stamp. Now this is a very small stamp set, very delicate words. So when you stamp down, you don't want to push real hard. You'll kind of squish your stamp and then it's just not going to look as clear. So once I have that stamp down, I'll go ahead and sprinkle this with some Brutus Mineral Alabaster White Embossing Powder. And then I'll just tap off any excess. And I'll heat that up with my heat tool until it's nice and melted. For my sentiment, I'm going to cut this out using the sentiment labels die. This is definitely a go-to favorite die of mine. I'm constantly using it because I can get a nice even cut. And I love the kind of rounded edges it gives. It's not as, uh, as if I were to cut with my paper trimmer. They're kind of sharp edges. Uh, they're not as clean cut. So this is just a preference of mine, a definitely a go-to and worth the time that it takes to flip this around and just make sure I have some nice clean edges. So you can see I popped that out and then I'm taking that sentiment label die and I'm lining it up so I can have a clean edge on both sides. And I hold that down with my Thermal Web Purple Tape, flip that over onto my magnetic pad for my Gemini and then I'll just run that through my machine and I'll have a perfectly cut strip for my sentiment. So here you can see, pops out great, gorgeous. Once my panel was dry, I did trim this down. So this is gonna be two and a half by three and three quarters because I wanted it to be just a nice edge frame behind my die cut image. So I'm just using my Tim Holtz paper trimmer to do that. And I actually do uh, save some of those edges that I had cut because I think they'll make some just great strips to add to a card if I need a quick birthday card. And I'll even show you those here quick. They just, the colors were so gorgeous and that glimmer paste on there was perfect. So I'm definitely going to save these for a card in the future. Now I'm just kind of lining up where I'm going to want everything to go. I'm happy with the size of everything and I'm deciding to just add this to a white note card. I thought there was so much detail in the die cut and the beautiful glimmer paste that I didn't need to add any more to this. So I'm going to take some foam tape and I'm going to line the entire back of my ink blended panel. And then once I remove the backing, I'm going to add that to my card. Now. I do oops here. I did not bring out my ruler because I'm kind of famous for just eyeballing things. And I did end up placing this a little bit crooked. I thought about trying to pry it back up, but it was pretty stuck even though I didn't push down really hard. I didn't want to waste anything. So it was staying crooked. That was just how I was going to roll with it. 
You could add some liquid glue to the back of your foam tape. That would give you a little bit of wiggle room, but I didn't think of it at the time. So just giving you a heads up if you decide you want to try and make something straight. I would definitely get a ruler out for that. So here I'm just removing the backing of that double-sided sticky adhesive. You could also just add little dots of liquid glue. But like I said, this was just a lot easier to do. And once I kind of lined it up on here, you could put a block on it. Just kind of sit for a little while. Make sure that that adhesive really sticks to our textured background. So you can see I'm just going to give that a good push. And I just love all of this sparkle on this card. And this is such a gorgeous little frame. I had so many ideas for this frame. It's just a perfect, simple thing you can do to put a card together. Now for my sentiment, I did add just a little bit of foam tape and I actually triple layered it on the very edge that hangs off of my ink blended mat there, just so it was nice and even. And then I'll give you a closer look at all the gorgeous shine and glitter on here. I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up and you can subscribe to my channel if you haven't already and would like to see more videos from me. I will have all of the supplies listed down below in my video description and also on my website as well. Thank you so much for joining me today and I'll see you in the next video.